out to y'all. They said they needed a motivate, motivational speaker. Do I look like a motivational speaker? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I would say yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Like a Thank you. Uh, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. <laughs> are Thank you? you, sister. But I'm not trying to blame you, like, are you? A pastor? Mm -hmm. Why? Because of my bald head? No. You're a tired. <laughs> You're a tired. Oh, they're tired. <laughs> Most people have a deceptive wear clothes that, you know, throw you off and stuff. You know what I mean? No, I'm not a pastor. Okay. Let me leave you alone. I'm a student in church. You know what a student is? If you go to the Baptist church, it's a deacon. Amen? Yeah, amen. Don't y'all go to church? Yeah, you got to have a higher power. Because I got one question for you. Who are you? Rhetorical question. Who are you? What do I mean by rhetorical? I'm about to say rhetorical. You don't answer the question. Right? <laughs> Definitely. Who are you? Why are you here? Rhetorical. And since you're here, what are you going to do about it? Those are three questions you should ask yourself. You ain't never ask yourself, well, who am I here? What is my purpose for being on this earth? What am I going to do about it? Or do you sit back and let other people define who you are? Oh, you're Mr. Jones' son. Oh, you're Mr. Jones' daughter. No, who are you? What are you all about? Why are you here? What is your purpose? You don't let people influence you. You're at you community college right now, right? Full-time students, I might add. Why? What are you planning on doing? Don't you like me? I didn't know when I first got to Fayetteville State. The only thing I knew was I couldn't be no physical education major because guess what? I couldn't touch my toes. That was a problem there. So I go in and I see the longest line at Fayetteville State. And I said, what line is this in? And they say elementary education. What is elementary education? I didn't know I was just a freshman from Kinston, you know what I mean? First time enrolled at college. Elementary education was another name for a school teacher. But my, my sense of reasoning say elementary education means easy education. Thinking that the course of study was what? Easy. Got in there was one of the most difficult courses that you could, that you could, could have chosen. But anyway, it was a free ride. I went down on a football scholarship. You know, I thought everybody in college, you know, wore glasses, were nerds, they looked, thought the young ladies, they looked like secretaries and all that. And I got to Fayetteville State, I was shocked. <laughs> they just looked like my high school classmates, you know what I mean? But they were from all over the what? Country. You know, running back was from New York, wide receiver, he's from Florida, I'm from Kenston. Don't they, don't they just, don't you just hate when somebody says, where you from? And you tell them, and they say, well, I ain't never heard of that. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. You know, you're just going and, mm -hmm. I'm saying, well, I'm not going to make up now. Say, I'm from Kenston, North Carolina. I thought Kenston was a big place. I thought everybody knew about Kenston because they said, oh, you're from Kingston. Yeah, Kingston. You're from Jamaica. No, man, I'm from North Carolina, you know what I mean? That's why they would say, no, I'm from North Carolina. Uh, but nevertheless, you know, you are who you think you are. You know how you can tell what teachers love about students? When they walk in that classroom and they like looking around like, yeah, I'm ready for this. You know what I mean? But don't walk in the classroom with your shoulders shrugged like, oh, Lord, what am I doing here? There was a, a story that was written and was talked about. This guy was in prison and they were questioning him doing an interview with him. They said, how do you pick your victims? You know, rob them in the hood, we call them jack them, you know what I mean? <laughs> how do you jack them? How do you pick them out? Guess what they said? How do they pick them out? 
by what action? Hmm? One is his posture. That's that's true. But what's another way? way? The main way, the reason how they swatted their victims was the way that they do what? Walk. Walk. See? Now, if I'm in the hood and I'm walking like this here, don't I look like somebody you can rob and get away with it? You're not going to get any trouble. But they said, those of you that are walking on confident, no, ain't nobody going to mess with them because they're ready for what? Anything. So it's the way that you carry yourself. And another way, when I was an assistant principal in Burlington, they said, whenever you go to workshops, you always sit in the front. The front means that you are a leader. Notice how you guys, <laughs> first time you go into a classroom, the first place you go is to where? Go in the back. That's an indication that you are a follower. You know, that's what the statistics and the research is saying about you. Hey, my man, we was waiting on you, but we couldn't wait any longer. Okay. Okay, then. <laughs> yeah, I got to get over it, man. I'm serious, man. I, you know, I'm like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. But get back, man. What's the greatest fear? that faces the people in the United States today. My bodyguard ain't gonna tell you. Man, if anybody look threatening to you, you know, like they're gonna get me, that should be worth one sandwich. One trip to Bojangles. And if they get me, I'm gonna take your card from you. But anyway, what they say, what is it? What is the greatest fear of people here in the United States? I'm going to give you an example. Hey, man, come on here and make a speech for me. Oh. <laughs> hey, sister, could you testify, testify for me? Brother, come on, man. Help me out. They said the greatest fear is what? Public speaking. Yeah, but like this past Sunday, I'm in church. The social past is not there. The past is there, and the other past is there. And then you look over at the deacons, well, y'all call it the deacon, over Stuart, nobody's there. And then this guy, he says, um, it's, what's the invocation? Come on, my church people. Invocation? Opening what? The service. And you got to do what? Pray. And I had to call him digging, hey, could you come in and give us a prayer? I don't know what, but my intuition told me that this guy's gonna call him and to pray. I didn't do like my boy did the last time he called him to pray. Told him to bow the head and then he crawled out of church. <laughs> Cause he was so afraid of what? Praying. So when they bow their heads, he just crawled out of church. That was crazy. But anyway. You have to rise to the occasion. You always have a patent, patent prayer, patent speech. People would determine, if you, if you don't want the teacher to call me, what do you do? Oh man, that's a telltale sign you don't know. You look up and like waiting and hope she don't call on you. But she think you know. Most of the teachers will not call on kids that they know that they're going to get a response from. <laughs> When you do <laughs> no, it's all about personality and your ability to articulate your feelings. So when you go to class, don't sit at the back. Always sit where? In front. I'm going to tell you something else. When they ask questions, always be the first to answer because they don't call on you no more. They always call on the person that doesn't answer, that doesn't respond. That's what they call on. I was at Fairfax State. I'm going to confess, y'all. I got a D in biology. That's the only D I have on my transcript. You know why? I paid 50 cents for the test instead of a dollar. You know how they sell the test? Man, I was so cheap, I paid 50 cents. It had only half the answers. I couldn't have had a dollar, I've got a little bit more. But that's what we're all about. But when I first got there, I was on the football team, this guy says, uh, JJ, come on in here. 
And he sat down. He was like a mentor, so to speak. Sit down here, boy. That's what they call it. <laughs> sit down here, boy. Let me tell you something. There are two places you better be familiar with. The library, that's one. Yeah. And you better go to class. He said, because if you go down to that dormitory, I done seen a lot of them coming, a lot of them go. They said, you're not going to make it. And I stuck with it. So it only took me four years to graduate from Fayette State playing football and uh, being a student. But that is the most fun that you ever had. Y'all are in the time of your prime of your life. You know what I mean by that? You don't have no job. I'm talking about a job that pays benefits. Do you? You don't have to worry about a place to stay. Do you? No. You don't have to worry about no food to eat. Do you? No, because your parents don't see to it that you get all that there. All that you got to do is just come to school and just do your work. And when you do your work, you can have fun. You got to do your what? Work. How do you get ahead? Guys, join these study groups. Most of the girls already know about the study groups. So you learn from each other. And so when you get to that classroom, you can set that classroom on fire. You say, well, what's the end result? The end result is a scholarship. You can still get a scholarship right here at James Front. All you have to do is do your work. That's all you got to do. And once you leave James Front, go to these four-year schools, you haven't made. They don't know if you're a freshman or a senior because of the transition period. Students coming up. And then you get on campus, what do I do right now? What am I? You do what most people do. You learn to get along with one another. And you study. You find out who to hang out with or who not to hang out with. When them jokers say party central, you better go the other way. That's what happened to my son. He went to A&T. He was up there partying like a rock star. And his GPA reflected it. The first semester I warned him. The second semester, I took him out of school. He ain't wasting my money because he was not on financial aid. And of course, eventually, you know, I can tell you all some things. But, uh, you know, they're a little personal. But I like to share personal information. Don't you lie? I don't like to hit the 411 and stuff. I know you do. Because <laughs> what he did was he came back, he went to the community college, you know, and uh, put him in a Beamer because he went to. Man, he went to work for a car, car dealership. You know, I'm joking a lot to you, man. I'm joking a lot to you just as cool as they can. They just want your what? <laughs> money. They tell you this car is great and this is that. And they get your money, man, that car, that $20,000 car, something you drive it off the lot. It's about seventeen, eighteen if you try to sell it back to them. Mm -hmm. You don't got robbed $2,000. But getting back to this joke, man. I was a principal at the time. My wife was a guidance counselor. This joke, he wanted to hang out and run with the thugs. He was an athlete like you. Football, basketball, baseball. Then he got with the wrong crowd. He left, he slipped up to a Greensboro a &T. That's kind of ironic. He had a chance to be up there, but he didn't do his work. His car breaks down on him, right? And that's when his car broke down, him and his, he was with his boy. You know his boy's a thug, because you know that's how y'all run in Paris, right? Well, most of you do. And uh, breaks down. They so familiar with the campus, they know who the guys are selling drugs on campus. So they don't have any money. They break in on him and rob him. One of the guys pull out the gun. So they get him for, he's on probation, you know, they got, uh, what's it called, common law robbery. So he comes back to Kansas. They transfer his papers back to Kansas. Uh, he goes out to community college. He's uh, one night. Me and my wife we go to a comedy show in Raleigh. He's supposed to be watching the Little Sister. They're like ten years apart. Um, this fool, excuse me, y'all. <laughs> he has, he has my ankle bracelet. You do know what that is for, right? Because the jail's a crowd, so they put a bracelet, ankle bracelet on you. Yeah, yeah, house arrest, exactly. Change the telephone and all that stuff. This fool, <laughs> when we leave, guess what he do? Try to take it off. He didn't try, baby. Oh, he need some scissors. He cut it off. Quite nice, that's going to send off an alarm where the other police station, you know. And, uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you exactly what I told him. You got to be the biggest fool in the world. You know. 
The only thing he did was cut it like a break, just to go down to the club. So of course you get 10 to 11 months at uh, some facility, you facility, Fairview prison, that's what I call it. It was a prison, but the oldest was 21. You would think that he would hit what? He would learn from that mistake, right? A couple of years later, I'm in my office. I'm the principal of the elementary school. And the policeman comes in there. She's an officer candidate. I said, Mr. Jones, do you know where your son was last night? I said, no, I don't know where he was. She said, well, there was a young man that got killed last night at the, uh, at the club. If you ever been to Kenston, I forgot the name of that club, but uh, he'll come tell me. And uh, I said, your son was one of the, one of the uh, guys that were implicated in the murder. What did I do? Hmm? Call. Call. Do you think I did? I'm not really upset. I'm more disappointed. I go home and I go into bed because I had a trip, you know. I always pack. We call it packing, you know what I mean? Packing stuff. On trips and stuff. And I look, man, for my gun, it wasn't there. And I said, This fool. His name is Jerome, but I just call him fool, you know what I mean? Because most of y'all guys, y'all ain't be climbing up fool's hill. You know what I mean by that? You think you know everything. You think you're big and bad. You think you're indispensable. You think you won't ever die. You know what I mean? But get back to it. Come to find out that they would, the guys that, that got killed, not, they had robbed them. Because when you don't have a job, you go to these bingo places and you go to these here gambling places. And they were robbing me. <laughs> and uh, as a result, they came, they call it Thirsty Thursday in Kansas. You know where you go down there. I guess you get that beer for cheap on Thursday. And they were out there talking in their little gang. And the guy in the car, the, the driver in the car, uh, he was not, he was the one that got killed. But it was the passenger that started, it, you know, the shoot. He started shooting and backing up toward them, and I guess they returned fire. The bottom line is, they don't know who did, who, who killed who. They didn't have any witnesses. Whenever they ask you for what they call it, a uh, uh, plea bargain, that means they don't have a lot of evidence. And I'm going to tell you something else, guys. The Lord had to be watching over them. The Lord, they tell me, the Lord watch over food and babies. Because all three of those guys that were implicated in murder, 19 to 21 months. In prison. Did you hear what I said? For murder, second degree, 19 to 21 months. So they didn't really have anything in the lawyers. It's, it's a long story, but it's from personal experience. And then he gets out, but he's straightened out this time. He's been married like 10 years, has a house and two kids. But it took him that long, and it had to take him that long to you know, make a mistake like that. And for you young ladies, I'm going to give you another testimony if you don't mind. I have a daughter, she's 30. She went to Fairfield State. She wanted to go to UNCG, but Fairfield State offered her a full ride, so she just jumped on it. She went to Fairfield State. She graduated from Fairfield State inside of three years. She was just smart, you know what I mean? Real smart. But you can be smart, but you don't have common sense. Young lady, you feel me? You can be smart, but you don't have what? Common sense. If you want to pick a good man, all you got to do is just, you know, uh, look at the male role models in your family. Okay? She went down there and fell in love with a GI. What's a GI? Soldier boy. <coughs> fell in love with a soldier boy. She graduated inside of three years. She had one more year. She could go to graduate school and got a master's. But she was in what? Mm -hmm. Love. You know, love is blind. <laughs> love is blind. Love hurts you too. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You ever been in love with somebody and they ain't in love with you? They might be in love with you know what you can do for them. Mm -hmm. Guys, I know y'all don't believe me. Go ahead, young lady. Guys fall in love harder than the girls. They all have that hardcore to call them like they all big and bad, but they ain't all that. No. She fell in love with a guy. Eventually got married. I knew the Joker was a dud the first time I met him. 
the young lady, if you ever want to find out about a guy, all you got to do is just ask your parent, your father, your office, so they can tell you it's good when they see one. Because she was a cheerleader at Fair State. She wanted me to meet him. Most guys, you know, when they meet uh, the father of the girlfriend, I know how I am. I know how I was taught. You go and introduce yourself. Hey, John Jones, pleased to meet you. This fool, he's sitting back in the corner. She had to introduce him. Telltale sign, one sign, boom. I ain't like it from day one. I don't even make any bones about it. Because I done been around all these athletes, all these emails. I got uncles and fathers and all this here. And so you know how a guy's supposed to act. Young ladies, watch how a guy treat his mom and pretty much tell you how he's going to treat you. To make a long story short, y'all, after like five years, uh, she worked, worked for Pfizer, this pharmaceutical, making big money, man. But this guy wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. Okay. Hello. It's reality. And unfortunately, you know, she went down here from there, but she's back home with her parents right now. But she has an interview uh, in Maryland as I speak tomorrow. So I'm talking about my daughter's personal experience. So how do you tie all this in? You got a, a son, smart kid that wanted to taste that street life, right? Got caught up. You got a daughter who's very smart but don't have any common sense, you know what I mean? Where do you learn how to make good decisions? Right in college. First, you really learn how to make them at home. Your parents make them for you. But y'all look at parents like they the worst that they ever seen. I know for everybody, parents, my mama, she won't let me do this. My daddy won't let me do that. They the worst I ever seen. And come to find out, what does the Bible say about your parents? Come on, my Bible students. Honor your what? Can I get an amen? <laughs> no, I'm serious. That's what it says. And I, and I point this out to my own children. You know what I mean? You messed up, you know. Because I'm, I'm going to give you another personal experience. I'm like the fifth of eight ch children. I come up in public house project. I didn't have a chance in the world going to school. My parents, you think your parents in this day and age can pay for eight kids going off to college and they like back to back to back children? You know, like, Jones, how old are you? Well, I'm 18. And my sister's 17, no, 19, 20, 21, and the other one's maybe like 25. And then my brother under me, he's 17, my sister's 16, the other one. See, see what's going on? My parents couldn't send me to college. But I always had smart teachers. Listen to them, they'll tell you now. Because when I was coming up, the teachers were numero uno. They had the nice houses, ain't that what you want? They had the nice cars, you know what you want? They had the nice dress real well. They always had money, and they could articulate very well. They were our role models back during the day. But in this day and time, you know, heaven help you, I don't know who your role models are. I guess Drake, uh, what's the, Rihanna, what's the other one named? Uh, Y'all help me out here. Y'all, yeah, Beyonce, Lord have mercy. Can't lose my life behind her, but anyway, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and they, 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 role you can't let them be your role models, man. Television will deceive you. You know what I mean? They have you thinking that you this and you all that. Did. No, man. Those people, did you know that Beyonce has a GED? Did you know that Jay Z has a GED? But do you know both of them are multi millionaires? So it's not, you know, remember I go back to the question is who are you? What is your purpose on, it, on this earth? Why are you here? What are you going to do about it? Same thing with you guys. I'm sitting between a half dozen students right here. One of y'all going to make it. And I mean big. Owe a lot of money. Because guess what? Girls fall in love with athletes, but they marry nerds. Why do they do that? They fall in love with athletes, but they marry who? Nerds. Nerds. Why? They realize their worth. Tell them again, sweetheart. They realize their worth. Just like Kendrick Lamar said. They realize their worth. That's why. Because the muscles, buddy, 
He gonna turn into flab. But that brain up here or not, they're gonna make some money. You know? And that's what life is all about, taking care of yourself. You gotta make the right decisions. You gotta study hard in school. You gotta uh, think for yourself. You gotta, what it called, dare to be different. Those are the things that you're gonna have to do. Once you master that day, you gotta make. You don't let nobody define who you are. You know what I mean? Think for yourself. You won't put on this earth for somebody else to influence you and think for them. When you go up, when you go to class, do the very best that you possibly can. You're gonna have the best time of your life when you go to school, when you're in college and you're doing your work. You know what I mean? I used to get up in the morning. I study early in the morning because I'm a morning person. You know, I didn't do it at night because at night, you know, worn the body out. You know, open, open that that book and no no, no letters and no read. They gonna look different. You're gonna get tired and you're not gonna do anything. You study in the morning. You get ahead of people. You let the teachers know. Go back there after the summers that you don't understand. You need to ask them what, you know, well, I don't understand. They said the message that you're communicating to them is that you're interested in what you're doing. And you're interested in what they're teaching. And they'll help you. You know what I mean? And then I'm going to tell you something else. Take advantage of these counselors and stuff. They know what the scholarships are. You know, be, knock on their office and ask them. You didn't do it in high school because you're too busy, you know, y'all. You know how we do in high school. Especially if you're a senior, you ain't doing jack. But walk around here like you got senioritis. Just having a good time. Yeah. Um, what's the uh, minimum score for the SAT if you are going to a four year school? GPA. What's the minimum GPA and the SAT? <coughs> duh, duh. But you've been to school for four years. I mean, you walk by the council's office for four years. <laughs> But you can't even give me two answers to see what I'm talking about. Yeah. What do you want to go to school? What do you want to be? Have you thought about it? What? Animator. Who? An animator. What's that? It's like a, a graphic design. How you make? You can make some money. Yeah. You can make some money. But you have some haters out there saying, "Man, you can't do that." Those are the ones you gotta get rid of. What do you want to do? Screen. Yeah, you can hang out with Tyler Perry down at ATL. <laughs> what about you? A nurse. Child nurse. Child nurse. Sweetheart, if you do that, then you're gonna get paid. Because <laughs> trust me, the human body is not designed to live forever. Everybody needs a nurse. That's why I treat my granddaughters real nice. Because I don't think my wife probably won't have a patient at the time. They have to take care of them, so they have to train the granddaughters. They like their granddad, <laughs> you know, so they help you out. What do you plan on being? Nurse and administrator. A nurse and administrator? You would definitely get paid because there's a shortage of male nurses. Okay. Hmm? Yeah, baby, you can you know, give me a loan for this crew that I'm going to take my wife on. But anyway, what do you want to be? <laughs> uh, flying nurse. You like flying? Yeah. You're going to get paid, too. Because some of us can't. How many of you have been on a plane? But I, don't know, I thought you believed in the Lord. But I'm trying to get out of that. I'm trying to travel. So. Yeah, I'm talking about I'm kind of scared. Well, let me tell you something. The average ever to get on a plane is kind of scared. I'm going to tell you my first experience. I was back in the 70s. I was like, join the Air Force. I'm going to show you all my region. I got drafted. Y'all would understand that. But I had to go in circle. That's what draft means. You have up to 30 days. Yeah, you four up to 30 days. <laughs> up to 30 days, you know, you have a chance to uh, to pick whatever branch of service you want to go in. I said, if I went in the Army and they would shoot me, they're going to shoot you. You know, we went to the war, they shoot you. Man, I don't want to die by no bullet. Let my mama know that, you know, if I got shot, it was in the back. She's going to say, well, why, why would he get shot in the back? What happened? He was running. Yeah. He was running away from the books. I was going to the Army, all the Marines. I didn't go in the Navy. Why? Because I don't care how good of a swimmer I am. If you're out there in that ocean, you think you're going to swim with an ocean man to land. You done lost. You better meet Mr. The shark and his buddies. So I didn't want to get, you know, if I drown, I didn't want to be shark. So I decided to go and why. 
not the Navy, not the Army, but Army. Air Force. You know why? I'll tell you why, sweetheart. If I blow up, I never know. I wouldn't even have to suffer. You know what I mean? And then I got on the plane. First plane drives from Raleigh, Durham to Atlanta. I'm about like you. I'm scared to death. <laughs> What's up with that do? I get on the plane. I corner my eye, peripheral vision. I watch what the guy was doing over there. He put down the tray. A few seconds later, I put down my tray. Right. <laughs> See what I'm talking about? To make a long story short, you guys, was we were flying from Atlanta to uh, oh golly, San Antonio Air Force Base. And guess what happened? It was thunder and lightning. We fly through the storm, and this old fool next to me told me, "You know, uh, the lightning is the plane. You're going down, don't you?" Is that a thing to tell somebody now? But the bottom line was, you know, keep God first, family second, and you what? Third, and you will never go wrong. So since Mrs. Uh, he was healed and, you know, <laughs> cut off my little speech. <laughs> that means uh, <laughs> maybe you got something out of it. It was a pleasure talking to you. You know, y'all have a good day. And if you ever see me around, you know, I don't know you. That's okay. <laughs> All right. Have a good time. Well, I'd like to thank Mr. Jones, John Jones. Everybody's good. Thank you. And hey, Mr. Jones, on behalf of the Student Support Services, we'd like to thank you with a small token. We cannot pay you for what you were worth. I get emotional, man. Oh, God. Hey, y'all. Uh, it's my screen. I, yeah, I, I, take, I take this gift on behalf of uh, Mrs. Hill and the rest of you guys. Mm -hmm. you know, thanks for everything. I'm going to go to uh, do something y'all can't do. I'm going to do something the devil won't do. What's that? I'm going to leave you. <laughs> we can do a part two. <laughs> no, we can do a part two. I got to go eat. Y'all have been very attentive. They didn't tell y'all, but I would have taught y'all to do it. <laughs> we thank you. We appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody got any questions real quick? Any questions? No? Oh, thank y'all for coming. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank y'all for coming.